Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast and happy Wednesday. It is hump day. Don't forget to hump someone you love. And speaking of humping people that I love, it's a girl that I love. It's Jackie O. Hey, Latter de Lou, screw Lou de Latter, Latter de Lou. Hello, Turdy Lou Who. Turdy Lou Who, Fa Who, Forest Da Who, Doris. Uh. Welcome, uh. toasters, to this show. Hopefully, the people who wrote this jingle are in litigious no so. Yeah, we'll get into it on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say about that song that is pervasive in the Grinch movies. It's always what the Who's are caroling, and we know the Who's are always caroling. And it's not on the soundtrack. It's disgusting. I kind of feel like it's ripe for recording. Nobody really owns it. Maybe oh, our girls. Kind of like, it's kind of like a legal gray area. Is that what it's you're saying? It's a legal, it's a murky, it's a jingle. It's it's something that's in the zeitgeist that nobody owns. <clears throat> I absolutely love that. I feel like there are, are songs like that. Like who owns Old McDonald? Somebody for sure, probably Fisher Price on it, if I had to guess. No, they own uh, that new song that everyone's talking about, you know? What's the song? The animals play, the animals play, the animals play all day. There's this mat, the monkey play. There's this mat that like everybody, it's viral. If you have a baby right now, I didn't have it for Harry, but then I saw the girlies posting it, so I got it and Charlie loves it and it will, it can, keep transitioning as babies get older and it has original music on it it's about 25 minutes of music songs you've never heard before but they will get inside your head and and they will not leave your head well let me say that i do love my job more than anything but if i had to be doing something else i would want to be in the music department of like a big children's company whether that's like hasbro fisher price i'm not particular i feel like the collaborative process is amazing in those companies. And I think we, you know, we would be doing really important work together. No, you would be very good at that. I do feel as though that's your calling that you've missed. And instead you're sitting here with your girl. Yeah. Or I would be one of those, um, you know, music class for kids where they have like a guitar player, a singer, and then like somebody handing out scarves. I would be one of those people. Oh yeah. If you didn't quite make it at Hasbro. And yeah, they said, yeah, that would be. The fallback. I feel like that's like the most fun, but also torturous job. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I feel like for me, my missed calling was being a bat mitzvah dance motivator. I completely agree. When we were watching your bat mitzvah video on family vacation, now I'm not, you know, my joints are old and creaky. Creaky. But at a, at a point in my life, like that was my calling. I can, I can get the crowd moving and going. Let me ask you a question, because I haven't been to a bas mitzvah in many, many years. Me neither. But I know in the day and age we grew up in, when you did the bat mitzvah circuits in seventh and eighth grade, every bat mitzvah worth its salt had a DJ with a bunch of motivators. They were like these young, kind of 20-something, very fit boys and girls wearing all black, whose job it was to like hype up the crowd, get the, you know, the conga line started. It was kind of a thankless job. Is that still part of bas mitzvah trend culture? I don't know why it wouldn't be. But please let us know in the comments, are the motivators still employed Motivating. or have they been taken over by AI? Yeah, I don't know why. I just feel like it's a thing of the past. I hope it's not. But also, I would love a documentary on that. Because I, I, I know now, like those 20-somethings were like drunk and they were like fucking uncles and cousins and stuff at bat mitzvahs. Like, I know that now. But back then, I didn't know. Like, I think there was a, an, an underbelly, like a subculture of the bas mitzvah motivational dancers and what was going, what was really, what was a real party? Yeah. Did there's, you say we're doing drugs? No, 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 no. That's the sort of thing that will get you fired. We won't tolerate that here. I actually think even sneaking alcohol, like, would be, a, you know, a demerit. But it's the kind of job that literally requires drugs and alcohol. For sure. But not if you're natural at it. Like for me, I wouldn't need drugs and alcohol, which is why it's my calling. For me, like the only way I would survive even one bat mitzvah is with like a massive amounts of drugs and alcohol. Like I would need Adderall, cocaine, like it's hours and hours of dancing. Bat mitzvah <laughs> is like insane. five hours. That's insane. I feel like maybe there are different levels of DJ companies and maybe the most elite have the, those who are most naturally gifted and they don't mm -hmm. need performance enhancing substances. And maybe yeah. like the lesser tiers, it's like, Cracked out motivators. <laughs> cracked. DJ cracked out. DJ crack. 
DJ Cracky-O. Cracky-O. That, that would be the name of your company that employs like a bunch of, you know, um, like Adderall riddled teens. It would but- be called Crackio Productions. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Only because, not that, it, that, that that's the type of environment you would harbor, but only because it's a great name. Yeah, yeah. And then I would have to live up to the name. Yeah, yeah. I know. Like, are you excited for like that part of your life? Like when your kids are grown, like they're doing the bat mitzvahs. And, like you obviously go as an adult and the kids go for like the kids, but you go because you're friends with the parents. Like it's kind of like the, the, it's the two journeys in life. You know, you're either a guest of the bar mitzvah boy or the bar mitzvah boy's parents. Yeah, because otherwise you don't go to bar mitzvah. It's just like I haven't been to a bar mitzvah in since Margot's. No, you're either 12 or 40. Like that's yeah. it. So uh, yeah, it's, it seems like a ball, like getting to be at a party yeah. all dressed up and that your kids yeah. are there too. But it's definitely like a, diff, a next chapter. Yeah. You know, so it's like, oh, I guess I'll be older. Wiser. Yeah. Crackier. Like 40s, yeah. 40s. Crackier. Ooh. So we've got a great show today. Let's do a little housekeeping. You know, it's Wednesday, which is a huge day here at The Toast. Normally we would do our Dear Toasters, our advice segment that we literally got over like 700 submissions last week. Like people are desperate are you for real? our For knowledge. real? Dead serious. You always say we of, don't get any. I did hound people last week being like, where the hell are you? And they showed up. So we'll do that, but we're going to do it tomorrow because last night was the premiere of Vanderpump Rules. We're going to do a little TV recap, even though there's literally nothing to say. No. We will talk about it. At the end of today's episode, we'll do uh, we'll bring back the TV recaps because Vanderpump Rules is on. So housekeeping will go as such. Wednesday, Vanderpump Rules. Thursday, Dear Toasters. Friday, Weenie of the Week. And Queenie. And Queenie. Can only be negative, Turdy. I can. But we have to try at least. And, you know, another week has gone by where I have a million candidates for Weenie of the Week and I can't scrounge up one measly person for Queenie of the Week. Well, maybe today your Queenie will come through. Perhaps. Perhaps not. We have great stories. I don't know for sure because I did not choose them, but I know that there was a new episode of New Heights. Yes. I actually don't know if anything they said made it to Fast Five. I have to, so they really like didn't say anything. Yeah. I like, watched. oh, here's, you know, Mr. Kelsey Father's nickname for Tailored. Yeah. Like, they're really and it's And it turns much. out to be like Tay. Now, I just want to say we got so much on Sunday. It's like we can't complain. But I was kind of for me, like the new episode of New Heights, like what would come from it was a life raft to get through the week. And now that I'm here, like I'm drowning. There was nothing. There was nothing. And I think their strategy is to talk about it on the show, but not in a way where they're actually saying anything because they don't want to actually divulge too much. So people are picking up scraps. Jason calls Taylor a part of the family as engagement looms like right and he literally didn't he just said the family mom dad tay like, yeah he, or he probably said like chief's family in the suite yeah friend, friends and family <laughs> so so that was tough but and i sent you this but story. i respect that they still get on the pod they still do their job they don't ignore it they address it but i also respect that they give us nothing it's an art it really is an art to talk about something without saying anything word salad energy Word salad, yummy, yummy. But the key to a word salad is to not let people know that it is a word salad. And you only realize after when you've eaten it, like, hey, oh, I had a salad. And I do think people watched the episode and like felt like they got stuff and they felt fulfilled, even though it's, you know, they're literally being gaslit because there was nothing in the episode. So you're right. It was a successful word salad. Because sometimes when you're, there's nothing more painful than listening to an obvious word salad that's a jumble of words that don't lead anywhere. Agreed. That's a failed word salad. And we all know who we're talking about. I literally don't know. Were your headphones not plugged in again? No, they were. I just plugged my computer into charge. Oh, okay. oh my God, getting yelled at. I don't know who you were just like suddenly referring Who's the referring queen to. of word salads? Olivia. No, no, that's, that's rude. Is it? I feel like Olivia would agree. She's quite verbose. Yeah, she's verbose. She's salad-like, but her salad has protein and... And cheese and things. Yes, but there's a lot of lettuce. There is, there is. Okay, who's the queen of word salad? That's so funny that you don't have the same association of a word salad. Were you going to say Taylor? Taylor who? Swift? No. Yeah, no. I, I literally don't know who you're talking about. Really? Is it me? No. Oh my God, you're not thinking broadly enough. Think in like a more global context on a very big stage. Kamala Harris? Like yes. I oh, I was literally like, 
I don't, but it's not really like a global stage, but I guess, yeah, yeah, she does give word salad energy. But you know, at, at some point- She's like, the master chef of a word salad, except it's she, not she's tasty. the Gordon. She's the Gordon Ramsay for sure. Yeah, but like she's botching. But, she, she's, but she's, Jackie, she also has like a team of people who wrote, who created, no, who but chopped the salads that's for her. even scarier because her word salads are not successful word salads in the sense that you didn't, you know you're eating a salad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, I, all I was trying to say was about the how we got on this word salad train. The stories, while New Heights word salad, there is yummy, yummy. kind of there is a story today that at least for me might be the most important thing we'll ever discuss here on the toast. Okay, is it one of the one that you sent me? Yes. Oh, actually, you sent me like three. Sort of, so. Well, at first I was sending you like things that I thought you would enjoy, I wasn't suggesting. But then I sent you a story from People Magazine regarding Tariq El Moussa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you and want that to be the first one? I actually think it is that important, like dead seriously. And for those who might be new here, this is a part of Toast Lore. This Toast is like Herstory. A, it is a running like joke, but it's not a joke to me. Like to me, it's very serious. It is something I, haven't stopped thinking about since 2016 and I haven't stopped talking about since 2016 and for the first time ever we have an update that's why you stay committed to the things that, that you, you need answers about. for yeah okay so let's get into the stories without further ado really well we're already talking about them so I don't want to like double dip okay wait let me think what did, like what did I want to share I had steak for dinner I saw Zach Shapiro <laughs> like let me think, let me think. I, had so I guess I could through. share that I'm still sick, but my voice has changed and I think it's like a nice voice. Um, and I'm in the process of like weaning from breastfeeding. So I'm just oh. like in pain. And it's like, it's such a slow process. And I think I might've like skipped a step. So I'm, I'm suffering. I didn't know that. That's kind of like a big deal. Why didn't you share that? I thought I did. You were like, have been saying that you're going to do it, but not that you're starting it. It takes weeks if you want to do it right. So I'm probably like two weeks away from being done, but this is kind of a a, a step backwards because oh, another? I feel like I should have pumped midday yesterday and I skipped it, but I literally didn't have the time. When was I supposed to pump? Do you need me to fly down and suck out? Do you have a little, do you have a little, what's it called, block? No, uh... Clog. clog and I think I've said this on the toast before but the thing about clogs is in the years since I've had Harry and Charlie like the science on clogs has completely changed like it used to be you know put heat on it yes because they thought it was an actual clog and now they're like no it's a swelling so put cold on it like the actual exact opposite like and now they say like take Advil and put cold whereas before it was like but the way, do you do cabbage so I never did cabbage before but I've heard that it really works and I'm going to be getting some cabbage today all my girly friends, like who have, they were talking about it the other day, like everybody does cabbage. It's like the thing, you just do it. Like it works instantly. Yeah, for your friends, did they breastfeed at all? Yes. But they wanted to be done. Yes. Because some people who don't want to breastfeed at all, like the week that they give birth, they do cabbage so that their milk doesn't come in or they do like ice oh, packs. Oh, maybe there might've been someone in the group who did that too. But I know it was like a mixed bag of girlies when it came to their breasts. Aren't we all a mixed bag of girlies when it comes to our breasts? Ain't that, ain't that the truth? So I'm going to do cabbage and also I, what's working out for me is when you're sick, your supply lessens. And oh, usually nice. when I'm sick and breastfeeding, I don't take medication because those medications are drying to dry out your nostrils, but they also dry out your breasts. But now I can take that medication intentionally to dry, dry. out. It's not That's working. That's fabulous. Now. Before we dive in, there was something I wanted to do. I wanted to use my platform for good. Ooh. So Jackie and I have started like this little campaign, just, you know, in our community. We really think that our older sister Olivia should get a dog. And not just any dog. Like her and her husband have spoken about getting like a Bernese Mountain dog. Like, yeah, yeah sure. sure. Like there's only one breed that we really would consider. And I think that we should use our platform for good. And I think we should start, you know, an initiative to anyone who's like a dog parent. And also like Olivia has two kids. Like she's a lot going on. It's not like, you know, she doesn't want a dog for no reason. Like, she's a lot going on. But I think, like, everybody should really kind of, like, share their stories about how the dog enhanced their life and how their kids love the dog so much. And maybe, like, drop a comment on YouTube or send Olivia a message. Like, I just think the power of the toast can convince her. I don't think so. She's so stubborn. We're all so stubborn. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not stubborn. You're stubborn. The satchel is stubborn. Who do you think is the most stubborn in the family? I don't think you're stubborn, by the way. You don't? No, you're a lot of things, but you're not stubborn. 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're a lot of things, you know, beautiful, kind, caring, generous. Sure, charitable. sure. I, yeah, I don't think I'm super stubborn, but sometimes I can be. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, who's the most stubborn? Satchel. Mm -hmm. But you're pretty bad too. Really? I feel like I'm so open to, like, I, I acknowledge my stubbornness. But you never, and like. And I know that, no matter like, I'll be stubborn times, against something, but in a year from now, like, I know I'll Right, I'll but, say, like, like, why can't you just do it not in a year from now? Like what? Like what? I feel like I've gotten so good. Like, if I told you something that you would love right now, you don't go and do it. You don't trust. Tell me. Tell me. What have Maybe I been have trying a reason. to do? Maybe I have a reason. Like, like you were but like you were stubborn against beef stew. Okay, fine. I'll give you that I'm stubborn against food. I have like a food thing. I have issues with like certain foods. That's to me like the biological. Fine, I'll accept that. Foods. But when I say, Turdy, you're gonna love this. Like, can't you just trust your girl? I feel like I do trust you. I tried your beef stew. <laughs> like, what more do you want you from me? You guzzled it. What more do you want from me? I ate the beef stew and I loved it and I said I was wrong. Like, my God, is that is that what a stubborn person would no, do? No, I'm not asking that. I'm asking for the next recommendation I give you that you try it at once, not at last. I feel like the first opportunity I had to try beef stew, I did. But well, after poo-poo-ing poo -poo it. Own. After poo-poo. And I just want to say, I didn't poo-poo beef stew. I poo-pooed just like the frequency in which we were talking about beef stew. But the thing is, we're doing important work. Like, I get tagged in beef stews all the time. Same. People are using beef stew to up their supply. People are using beef stew to get pregnant. It's a very nourishing food, and it's important that we do that sort of work here, Turdy. Should I make beef stew for my book club? Yes. I'll send you they the reel. You no, have I to follow the reel. I, I, I'm pretty much, like, dead set on, like, catering. Actually, I met a, uh, a DM with a toaster yesterday who's like a kosher chef and she's like let me let me just like cook it and like drop it off at your house that sounds amazing or ben could make the beef stew because he helped me and he knows the stew yeah i helped you too and i could just watch our patreon vlog at patreon.com slash the toast you could I, if i wanted to i could it's a good vlog you should all watch it i also wanted to update everyone on something that like i feel for so many months i was talking about endlessly and then i just kind of stopped talking about it my eye twitch and I do want everyone to know, like, it is still omnipresent, like extremely. When we went away on vacation, it it went away a little bit, but not so much. And it's definitely lessened, but I still have an eye twitch. Same eye, same area, same everything. Sad. And like, that's what I'm living with. Yeah, sad. <laughs> sad. Sad. When I climb into bed, I start feeling sad. Suddenly, I miss my mom and my dad. Without Nintendo. <laughs> right? Right. And this is just a great reminder that this podcast is hosted by not one, but two female authors. Jackie wrote an absolutely, just truly like chilling, groundbreaking, borderline heartbreaking children's book called The Camper and the Counselor. You can get it on Amazon or wherever you get your books. It's called The Camper and the Counselor by Jacqueline Ashray. Actually, Jackie, kind of weird you didn't use your government name on the cover. Well, I, I used my known name. So much smarter, but like, it's just kind of crazy. Now. I know, but it was definitely a You used choice. your stage name. Yeah, it's my stage name. I didn't use my married name either. I went with the name that like the people know me by. And my book is also by my stage name. Um, both my stage names, Girl With No Job, The Crazy Beautiful Life of an Instagram Thirst Monster. It's a memoir. It's an autobiography. It's 240 pages. It's really a light read. People are saying it's kind of their you know favorite book of the past 10 years. That's just what people are saying. And you can also get it on Amazon. Again, it's called Girl With No Job by Claudia Ashray. I think you'd enjoy both of those. You know, something for everyone in your life. I feel like not enough people know that we're authors. No, I agree. And you know, not to, I just feel like I'm always bringing up tanks, like wherever I am. But she's kind of like, like I'm inspired by her and I was watching her stories and I realized like she's always talking about her book and I'm like I need to talk about my book more like I always I forget that I'm a published author I and Tinks helped me see that in myself you I know? think the same thing like I'll see the book on the shelf and I'm like I need to talk about this book more no I'll see the book on the shelf and I'll be like things I did that <laughs> <laughs> things I did that I actually in my time hop like I see all the stuff for pictures of like getting the book ready like a year ago I was picking out yes. the size I had like pictures of like a bunch of different books so it's all very exciting how much yeah. the difference a year can make we're women in comedy we're women in podcasting we're women in publishing we've been women in publishing though on both sides and this podcast is like an episode of younger as readers and as authors yeah I also think like 
going back to a conversation from 30 minutes ago, jobs like we could do. I actually, people ask me all the time, like if you weren't doing this, what would you do? And I always have like jokey answers, but I actually do think I would really enjoy working at like a Reese's book club or like and a, being a publishing reader. house. And being like something, like maybe a tastemaker in the, in the literary arts. Yeah, I think I could be a good reader, like read books and recommend them or decide if we want to publish them or decide if they're going to be the book of the month. You would be like the junk pile coordinator at a publishing house. What is that? Didn't you watch Younger? They have a junk pile where like all these manuscripts end up, either people send them in or they came from someone else. And every now and then like you'll find like a diamond in the, in the junk stack, but nobody wants to touch the junk stack. So it's literally just like this big pile in the corner of the office. Yeah, no, that's what Dana's calling is that yes. she missed because she reads really quickly she has really great taste and that's her calling I love that I'm glad that she has a book club podcast where she can at least channel some flex, of, flex channel some muscle. of that but it's sad when people miss their calling just like you and I bringing it back to the top of the show I do feel like I miss my calling dead seriously like when it comes to having a career in music it is my dream. I really need to release some more music, even though like, you know. Did you see Kate Hudson released a song? I did, and I'm so glad you brought that up because like a fun fact about Kate Hudson, she reminds me a lot um, of Gwyneth Paltrow in the sense that like they're both known for being actors. However, they had both have amazing singing voices and I believe they were both on Glee. So that's how I discovered that they both sang and I think that was like the one opportunity they got to like do both things that they love. And I've always known that she's saying there's actually a viral video of her singing, I think the national anthem or something. People are always shocked to find out she has an amazing voice. And I think she finally was just like, fuck it. What if I just released a song? Yeah. And it's like a bop. Yeah. I love it. I love that for her. She didn't like do like major promo for it. I think it's actually just truly a passion project. And I think her man's is like a music producer. So they probably just like made it in the house. Classic stuff. That's a dream. Yeah. Being married to a music producer who has like a studio in the house that you can use like to make music, but also record your podcast. Also another, like Jackie Schimmel. Like, but that is probably, like I'm not a jealous person. Actually, I am. But there are a few things like in life that make me really, really jealous. And Jackie Schimmel being married to like a very successful music producer who has a studio in his own house that then like he helps her like soundproof her studio. Like, like that's a dream. And then he's also responsible. I think he wrote like, I forget which One Direction song it was, but like a really good one. I live for you, I long for you, Olivia. One of those. Wait, shouldn't it be called Jackie then? Wow. Then maybe it wasn't that. I think it was, um, <laughs> would she be my queen since we were 16? We want the same things. We dream I feel like I could just look it up. Dreams, all right. This is more but fun. I, I would say it's just more fun to like kind of scroll through the category. Because I remember I was like, like singing that song once on Instagram she's like by the way did you know my husband did this song I'm like no it was like the craziest thing I ever learned like that to me like that's something to be jealous of and I think being jealous is okay as long as it's something worthy you know yeah and as long as you don't act in an nefarious way no, I'm not jealousy. gonna steal her husband <laughs> yeah, no, we're like, <laughs> yeah yeah as long as it doesn't yeah. drive you to do bad things yeah no I would never I would never but no What's I think you're jealous of I was just saying yesterday and, and like I'm jealous of Shannon's productivity Oh, I'm jealous of Shannon's house. I'm jealous of, yeah, just Shannon's get up. I'm jealous that Shannon wakes up at the time she wakes up naturally and starts yeah. the day and has a coffee. Like, if I could get up at that time, I could get so much more done. I guess it just depends. Like, I'm actually jealous of, like, a lot of things in Shannon's life in particular. Like, I'm jealous of her body. I'm jealous of her house. I'm jealous of her clothes. I'm jealous of her sense of style. Like, it's one thing to be able to buy nice things, but it's another thing to, like, style Put them, them together. Away. Yeah. I'm, yeah, but, but Shannon's also, like, when you meet her, I actually understand why people maybe, like, would meet Shannon before they meet her and like dislike her because she's there's so much in her life that's to be envious of yeah and then you meet her and like you can't help but be truly happy for her and like realize she has all these things because she deserves them you know and she like earned them totally Ugh, hate hate her yeah great anything else jealous of today oh my god today i don't know but in general <laughs> yes like i'm a i'm a very i'm constant i need to, that's something i need to work on actually not to keep bringing up tanks but when we were together she was like we were having a really deep conversation and she was like, what's like your least favorite part of yourself? And I was like, my thighs. And she was like, no, 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 like personality skinny wise. legs. Yeah, by the way, I was, I was making a joke. Oh. She was, she was like <laughs> personality wise. And I was like, I really am like a jealous person. And it's like a really poor quality. And she was like, yeah, you should fix that. <laughs> I feel like, yes, you could fix that. Or I think if you're honest about it. Yeah. It becomes like a funny thing and it's not so dark so true and I feel like people who harbor jealousy and like just act like don't 
vocalize it, don't make a joke about it, and just like act out. It's so out of jealousy. Like that's, that's like being dark. green with envy. But being like, you could turn your jealousy into like complimentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's there's so no, true. there are a few things that like if you're jealous of someone having, why not go and get them for yourself? So true. Of course, not a music producer husband, but no, not I that guess specific I specific one. I guess I could turn my alarm on at six a.m. and clean yeah. my closet. Right. There are certain things like within your grasp. Right. My part feels off. It's like bothering me. It looks good. Thanks, girly. Okay. I do feel. Now yeah. I feel it is time for the fast five stories that you need to know. And the fast five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Drizzly. Picture this nightmare scenario. You're hosting friends for the big game. It's neck and neck in the fourth quarter. And suddenly you realize you're out of drinks. Boo. You start to sweat. Your friends start to turn on you. You're forced to go on a last second drink run and you end up missing the game winning touchdown while in line. Terrifying, isn't it? Well, luckily, you can avoid the drama with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits, and then get them delivered right to your watch party. You can also compare prices across multiple stores in your area. You can find the best deals on game day drinks and get back to armchair quarterbacking from, you guessed it, your armchair. Download the Drizzly app to get Drizzly or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com today. You must be over 21. It's not available in all locations. And I want to say probably one of my favorite things about Drizzly is that in certain areas, you can get Spritz Society on Drizzly. So when you're crushing spritzes or whatever it is that you're drinking this, actually, no, it's next weekend, excuse me, for the big game, make sure to have Drizzly downloaded on your phone. Like, don't be irresponsible. Things can, you know, sometimes, you you, you miscalculated how many drinks you were going to need. You're human. It's fine. Like, you were doing a lot. Have the Drizzly app. You can download it, D-R-I-Z-L-Y. You can also go to drizzly.com. You must be over 21. It is not available in all locations. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com, D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com today. Must be over 21. Not available in all locations. Today's episode is also brought to you by the new Lionsgate movie, Scrambled. So Scrambled is a heartfelt yet hilarious journey of self-discovery and self-love. It's written, directed, and stars Leah McKendrick, who is, quote, among IndieWire's top female filmmakers to watch this year. Super excited about this new Lionsgate movie. It's called Scrambled, and I feel like it's really for the toasters. I think it's kind of a really relatable journey that the character's going through. Um, perhaps one that you've gone through or you're currently going through, that journey of, like, being single, not minding so much, but knowing your biological clock is ticking and like wanting, you know, maybe wanting kids one day, not being so sure, feeling like you have to grow up overnight. That's exactly what happens in this movie. So the quintessential eternal bridesmaid, Nellie Robinson, who's played by Leah McKendrick, is constantly finding herself between weddings, baby showers, and bad dates. So when she begins to feel like the clock is ticking, she is faced with bleak romantic prospects. Nellie decides to freeze her eggs, setting her on an empowering journey to a brave new world where she ultimately discovers the one she's looking for might just be herself. Film Threat sells, says it's brilliant storytelling. You can learn more. Watch the trailer at lionsgate.com slash movie slash scrambled. The trailer will give you chills. Also, it has my favorite song in it, uh, Love Myself by Haley Steinfeld, which is like such a good song. Like, And I feel like it's emblematic of the theme of the movie. That's a song that you should have recorded. Okay, I'm so glad you brought that up. I want to talk about that in one second. Great. The movie Scrambled is in theaters February 2nd. It is rated R. Grab your gal pals. <coughs> Excuse me. Go by yourself. February 2nd, Lionsgate movie Scrambled is in theaters February 2nd, rated R. Um, it's so funny that you said that that's a song I should have recorded. Both times when I, I for those who maybe don't know, I released two Grammy Award uh, winning songs. And but at the very beginning of the creative process of both of those songs with the producers and the songwriters, the song that I cited, like that I wanted it to be like message wise, Sound wise, melody wise, was Love Myself by Haley Steinfeld. Totally. And then the other song that you should have written is Brave by Jesse J. Uh, actually, you should have written that song because I don't even know that song. No, no. If you listen to it, will you listen to it quickly? Uh, have we learned nothing for oh, Friday? Frick. We frick. can't be playing songs on this podcast anymore. Frick frack. But, anyways, the song is like one of my favorite songs. It's called Brave by Jesse J. By the way, shout out to Jesse J. She's one of my favorite people on the planet. She's so like criminally underrated. She's so criminally talented. Like she's yeah. the best singer ever. She's such a great songwriter for herself and for other people. And now she's literally, from what I see on Instagram, the most amazing mom. Like mom. nobody is happier to be a mom. I just love watching people who like love motherhood. And she, I love her. It's also fun to watch someone who 
like motherhood didn't come easy to mm -hmm. and who wanted it for so long and I think I heard her say in an interview and she kind of came to terms with like the fact that that was not going to be her future um so somebody who wanted it so bad and then got it like it's it's beautiful to watch it really is she's a fun follow and I want new music from Jesse J agreed but also like enjoy your life true not me putting pressure on a new mama so true mamas get her <laughs> no get her <laughs> Our first story, Tarek, I mean, this is huge news. Tarek El Moussa finally tells his version of the gun incident that ended his marriage to Christina Hall. So Tarek El Moussa has his memoirs coming out called Memoirs of a Tarek. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called actually? Flip Your Life. How to find oh, opportunity. Oh God, enough with flip. How to find opportunity in distress in real estate, business, and life. Of course it had to be Flip Your Life, but I just feel like it could have been memoirs of a flipper. No, it really should have been memoirs of a Tariq. Memoirs of a Tariq. He's telling his side of the story of the 2016 incident involving a gun that led to their divorce. So when the pair split became public in December, it was re revealed that they'd actually secretly separated seven months earlier during an altercation in which Tariq fled into a nature area with a pistol after what he called a blow up fight with Christina. This was in now, 2016. Let me say, like, why this has such historical significance to me. I obviously, like, during 2016, like, I was really involved in HGTV culture. Like, obviously, I stay, I came for Chip and Joe, stayed for Chip and Joe. And then I found, you know, some other couples. And Christina and Tarek were, like, this low-budget West Coast version. They had the worst style. Their show was horrible. But, like, they were so basic. Like, and it was just... It was interesting to watch them try to be Chip and Joe when like they never were going to be Chip and Joe ever in their lives. Like they didn't have one creative bone in their body. All of their houses look the same white subway tile. And they were just like this weird couple. And I just started to like follow them and stuff. And then like this story comes out that there's this crazy altercation at their house. Tarek has fled the home. They live in the mountains or like there's a mountain range behind their house. He fl flees to the mountain with a gun. The kids and the wife are in the house. There's like a helicopter looking for him. It was the craziest story, and then nobody ever talked about it ever again. And I was like, wait. They ended up getting divorced a few months later, but then the show went on as like, you know, co-parenting, flipping and flapping. And it was just like, are we never going to talk about the gun and the mountains? And it has been years of waiting for an answer. And now we have one. And honestly, there's two sides to every story, and there always are. So Christina called 911, and police flooded the park as quickly as it devolved. It was over, the incident and their marriage. In the book, he writes that after a heated argument, he, quote, went out to our backyard in Yorba Linda and hopped over the fence. On that much, the exes agree. But his explanation as to why differs. He says rather than fleeing, he was craving exercise and wanted to scout the trails near the house after having recently purchased some new mountain bikes. The neighboring Chino Hill State Park is a habitat for wildlife, including mountain lions and bobcats. So he brought along what he calls an insurance policy, a 38 caliber pistol. He says he'd received his California concealed carry license a few weeks prior. When a helicopter appeared overhead, he recalls he thought there was an emergency, possibly a wildfire, but he quickly realized it was for him. He said a police officer leaned out of the helicopter, pointing a rifle at me. Dust swirled around me from the spin of the blades and a loudspeaker crackled, get your hands in the air. More police in off road vehicle swarmed the officer in the helicopter miraculously recognized him i heard an officer shout Tarek. i screamed back yes i'm the guy from tv what are you guys doing they lowered their weapons i feel like the police officer probably got his name from, from the from wife Tarek. who called the police yeah not because he was a big hgtv fan yeah they recognized you because you were the person they were looking for <laughs> they recognized you because you had a gun they recognized you from the wanted poster <laughs> They recognized you from the pictures your wife sent of you. But it, literally, Tarek is me if I ever storm into the mountains <laughs> with a gun. No, you, Tarek is you if you're ever under arrest. They recognized me. Oh, but, but they take a mugshot. Paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just want to say, I don't believe a word of Tarek's, like out of Tarek's mouth. So convenient. First of all, you hop the fence. Like, you only hop a fence when you're in the heat of a moment. Obviously, something happened at the house. It was like a, something escalated. And he probably wanted to, like, blow off some steam. Maybe he did bring the gun for wildlife. That's possible. But him acting like he was going to get exercise to, you know, look for some trails for his new mountain bike. But he also just happened to, like, get into a fight with his wife. Like, it just makes no sense. Like, sorry. Well, maybe he sense. was, like, planning on looking for trails. 
And he was like, had it in the back of his mind, okay, I'll do that later. But then he got into a fight with his wife and he was like, it's a good time to look for trails. <laughs> I just want to say, I like to believe people. and I don't. And whether or not this is true, it's an amazing explanation. Because now- Oh, that's so funny. I completely disagree. Oh, it looks I, so stupid. Maybe, I feel like the word exercise is a little- Juvenile. vague no it's like okay maybe that word it can mean a lot of things if if he had said like just to blow off some steam but like to use the word blow off some steam and then have a gun on you is a little scary so i'm sure the editor said we'll say exercise <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if that's the case he wanted to just like get out get into nature you know, blow off steam really and he brought his gun for the wildlife like so i do want to say I believe that he brought his gun for the wildlife. Like, I actually do believe that California has, like, coyotes and shit. Like, I believe that part of the story. I do think there are nuggets of truth. But him saying that he left the house for any other reason than the fact that he was angry, he got into a fight with his wife, and he just wanted to blow off steam, like, is a lie. Who hops a fence? Well, so he's saying he got into a fight with his wife, and he was craving exercise due to maybe the fight with his wife. Like, it's just a milder way of saying what you're saying. It's a very convenient, it's a, it's a manipulation of language. Yeah, but it's a good one. I like, I have respect where, for this. Where's Chris, where's memoirs of a Christina? I need to hear her side of the story. She's never spoken out. All she did was call the police because her husband stormed off angry with a gun. I feel like if this is wildly untrue, she'll find a way to tell the other side of the story. But it's the father of her children. They've moved it's past it. Years She's ago. married twice over now. Like maybe she'll be like, oh, Tarek also like really went through it after this. Like everybody was team Christina because Tarek's in the mountains with a gun. <laughs> and he like drank himself silly. He was said Did he was he? living in, yeah, he, um, he talks about the aftermath of the split as physical and emotional hell and rights of hiding out on his boat, drinking himself unconscious and going through extreme withdrawal from the testosterone he'd been taking until friends stepped in to get him to a rehab facility. He said in the what wake of in this- in the world? Testosterone he, he, withdrawal? Yeah, that comes up again. Um, when he talks about it, he said, I hold nothing against Christina. I understand why she did what she did. We had a lot of hard years through my sicknesses and my mental health struggles from the testosterone. So- testosterone abuse is maybe I didn't know you a, could abuse testosterone or maybe he has um clearly a lot of clearly you have men. to read the book to understand his struggles with testosterone like this is just one he probably references yeah. it throughout the book but that Wait, is, like I know men take testosterone to like jack up to it's like a really good thing for their health and as far as I know it's not addictive so I don't know how you can no, I mean, I have no idea. I'm, or maybe yeah. he has like naturally low levels of testosterone, so he has to take more. And then, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not even going to start to think about like, or speculate on how you can like deal with testosterone. But if you're having withdrawals. Excuse me, what? He had testosterone withdrawals. Leave me alone. Withdrawals. <laughs> I'm a phonetic swirly. It, is, it also is an extremely hard word to say. Like, Withdrawals is That's how like, I say it. I think on Redheads, I said the word drawers. No, we had this conversation on the toast jacket about uh, drawers. Okay. Like about so, how it's like undies, a cabinet. For sure. So I just want to let you know, like withdrawal falls under the category of drawers. So you make, like, it's redundant to make fun of me. Okay. It's redundant. <sighs> I can't lie. I don't feel a, like an overwhelming sense of peace like I thought I might after our you know, finally getting a follow-up after a year. Tarek could never give you peace, Turdy. No, I do feel more confused than ever. I feel like, honestly, now I feel less at peace. I want to hear from Christina. But you're right, Christina and him, like, are co-parenting. There are some lines you don't cross. Let him tell his, like, silly little story in his silly little memoir that no one's going to read. And I think Christina probably holds on to the fact that people won't believe it. And I also feel like for you, Turdy, this story is such a core part of the makeup of Turdy. It's so, it's so That dark. no matter what he says, like you can't let it go. Who would you be without this it's, story? No, I have so much riding on <laughs> this particular story. So all that to say, I stand with Christina. Yeah, and everyone did, but it's Tarek's turn to tell his story. Tarek's basically saying, me. They should have called the book Tarek's Turn. No, we could have come up with such a better name than, what was it? Flip or flop? Flip your life. 
Yeah, I guess he's trying to be like, you know, macho investor man. Like it's trying to be like a business book. So it's not, it's not really a memoir. It's more like, it'll probably fall under the advice how to miscellaneous column. How to flip your life. Right. So I think like, it should have be called Miska, Muska, I got one. Tarek El Musa. Oh my God, I love. Perfection. I was thinking Tarek in care of business. <laughs> what do you think? I think that's really strong. I think so too. Drop a comment. What would you have named Tark Del Musa's how to memoir? And also maybe maybe you should have called it Musa Vibes Only. Love. <laughs> also, just like another important fact that I think we absolutely have to bring up here. Jackie and I have met Tark El Musa at the LAX airport. We did. He was in security. It was right after it was 2018 because we were traveling the globe. Yeah, and I think we, we saw him with the duffel and we said, do you think he has a gun in there? Actually, it was 2017. It was the wow. year of the breath. So it was right after. T-Y-O-T-B. So it was right after Gungate. Yeah, that's why we were extra excited. Yeah. Extra titillated. I have a picture with him. I have to find it. I, I think probably you, could. You found it in the past. Have I? I know I took it on Snapchat and I think like my caption was Tarek. Like, <laughs> so search caps. Tarek on your phone. Oh, that's an amazing idea. The phone Tar search feature is getting incredibly smart. Oh my God. So funny. No, of like course, a, I was looking for my have meatball recipe last night. And I, I searched ground um, chicken and it didn't come up. I have a million screenshots of like various news stories about Tarek El Musa. I have an Uber where my driver's name was Tarek. Obviously, I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. Um, oh, I have a COVID test result that I screenshotted and the physician's name was Dr. Tarek. Um, no, okay. I mean, it, it would take me a while. I have to go, you know. What year you said it was? 2017. Oh, my phone only goes back to 2018. Damn. No, it doesn't. Sorry. I will find it. And I, oh wait, here, wait, we're, no, we're in Nashville. I'll find it and I'll post it on my Instagram. Oh, by the way, there's another article talking about his steroid addiction, which um, he started taking steroids after facing testicular and thyroid cancer. And oh. the steroid that he was taking was testosterone. On top of that, he was taking HCG injections every day because he was told to. So yeah, the addiction was to testosterone steroids. Damn. Yeah. That's why you got to read people's book. It's so true. People are layered, mm -hmm. some would say. Are you ready for our next story? You mean, am I ready to move on from a story I've waited six years, eight years for? Excuse me. No, I'm not, but I'll find a way. Yeah, we can always come back, Dirty. It's your show. Don't worry. I will. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for our next story then? Yeah. I don't know how to start the next story without asking you profusely. Okay. Um, no, just like a next, a segue in general. Oh my God, just it's not story. about this particular story because this oh, is a um, cause to celebrate. Kristen Newscheck lands an NFL deal after creating the viral jackets for Taylor Swift and Brittany Mahomes. Kristen Newscheck has landed a licensing deal with the NFL. The representatives from the NFL confirmed to Page Six Style that the organization has penned a licensing deal with the designer, as first reported by Sportico. Kristen, who's married to Kyle Newscheck, signed a contract with the Football League for an undisclosed amount that will allow her to use NFL logos on her designs. Okay, so I think a lot of people were hoping that this would happen. We spoke at length about how it would really be in the NFL's best interest to really capitalize on the moment they're currently having with like young women um, and give young women an option for like sports clothing that aren't fugly. Sorry, there's nothing out there for women that isn't like truly embarrassing and heinous. And if there's one person who could do it, it's Kristen Juszczyk. But in order to legally sell and distribute official merch with NFL logos, team logos, team colors, you have to obtain a license. And the NFL is like notoriously stingy. I think there's like five companies in the world that have the license. And her getting one is huge. I wonder what she's going to do with it. I wonder if she's going to continue to make like bespoke high-end one-off pieces, if she's going to start like a direct-to-consumer retail company. I don't know, but this is huge. This is huge and a huge step. One small step for Kristen Juszczyk, one large step for womankind yeah but I would also like to see her have a line with NFL shop yeah I mean that I think would have been like the more obvious route for Kristen specifically like long term 
this is a better deal for Kristen. That's true. That's true. Also, Zach told me, because I was talking to Zach about this last week, how Kristen like needs the, or the license, license, whatever. He said that Aaron Andrews has a women's collection with the NFL shop and like that is their women's line. women's thing. Like, oh, women, you want clothes? Like wear by Aaron Andrews. And I hadn't looked at this stuff until now because he was like, you should look at it. It's cute stuff. Is it? Some of it. Some stuff is cute. And like you could tell they're inspired by like the reworked type of uh, apparel. Official women's gear at the NFL shop. They have like denim jackets with the logos on the back. Like it's, it's, it covers. What I'm seeing, I don't know if this is Aaron Andrews. I'm just looking at women's. It's fucking heinous. But do you see the ones with like the lace, like. uh, No, I must be looking at the wrong thing. Oh, here by Aaron Andrews. Oh, it's better. Yeah, it's better. And I'm I'm sure. Maybe there's like some stylish. clause where like they actually couldn't do this same thing with Kristen because they do it with Aaron Andrews. It's not it's not amazing, I can't lie. It's better, but it's not great. It's not amazing, but Aaron Andrews isn't a clothing designer. Right. And Kristen Juszczyk is. So I don't know if she's gonna like start raising money, if she's gonna start a whole ass company, but I think by next NFL season she could be up and running and given the momentum, like this is huge. Like she could really like be at the beginning of starting like a billion dollar company for real. Yeah. It's a, it's like kind of the most amazing thing ever. I wonder if her and Taylor have chatted. Because as far as I know, Taylor didn't order. Brittany did. And, you know, Kristen, being the savvy businesswoman that she is, threw in a jacket for Taylor. Oh, you think? Now, I, the way I, I mean, you might actually know. And actually, I don't even know how I know that. I might have just made that up. What I think happened is Brittany's worn the things a few times. I'm sure Taylor was like, I like your coat. And Brittany was like, I'll get you one. Mm. My friend Kristen okay. makes them. She would love to make you one. I don't know why I just assumed that like Brittany ordered and she threw an extra one in the box. Oh, that it was Kristen's entrepreneurial spirit that was like, here's one for Taylor. Yeah, I, I really don't know why, why, where I saw that or if I just actually made that up. I feel like Taylor complimented Brittany and Brittany was like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll get you one. That's classic friend stuff. That yeah, all yeah, the time. yeah. Like I I'll handle for, it. I do that for you all the time. If you like something, I'm like, Turdy, I got you. Oh, by the way, have I gotten like a bunch of boxes? Not a bunch. I have like so much stuff arriving at your home. Just the one, one stuff of like the the outfits. But then have you opened any of it? Yeah, it's in your room. Okay, but like I have something coming. Don't open it. Who's it addressed to? Me. So okay. don't open any of my boxes. Okay, just like tell Zach because he just opens boxes willy nilly around here. I have to tell Zach you live with him. Can you tell him? And why would he listen to me? Not you. I'll forget is the problem. That's the problem here. But come to think of it, like a toaster DM me. She was like, you have to get this for Jackie. And I did. Oh, and it's addressed to you? Yeah, but I okay. cannot. I, actually, I could just text him right now since we're like doing admin in the middle I want of the you, show. I want you to open it on air. Oh, wow. Please It was like from an Instagram ad. I know it's never boxes. showing up. Check order status. Sign in. I Oh my God, I totally got scammed. What is this website? Oh my God, so exciting. I ordered some kids clothes from a website that looked fake, but it wasn't. And they came and they're super cute. Okay, they're making me log in, but like I don't have, oh, I totally got scammed. I have to call the bank. And the toaster who scammed you. Maybe it was her company. Her heart was in the right place. You don't think she set up a fake website to trap you? I don't. That's good. You want to hear something so funny? Always. So I I need to check the dates. I got an, I guess I had totally forgotten, but in October of 2022, let me get you the exact date. What are you going to wear for the Super Bowl? Like pajamas. I kind of need Kristen Juszczyk to make me something. Oh my God. I mean, it is a dream, but I feel like she's like kind of busy. Oh yeah. She's probably making outfits for all the wags for the big game. At least she has two weeks this time. Usually she only has one week. So October 6th, 2023, I placed an order at the Taylor Swift merch shop for 1989 merch. One week ago, I got an email that my order had shipped. (laughs) Well, that's, and it still hasn't arrived. But people know when, like, that's her thing. Like, she. 
I had completely forgotten. She doesn't produce until after the orders are in. It will be three months. Yeah. Well, that's like, I mean, that's good. Makes me feel good about if our merch ever takes a little bit. Me too. Our merch takes like two to three weeks. Which it says and, on the site. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish we could do it faster, obviously. But like Taylor's over here making me wait three months for like a $300 order. I'll survive. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better too. Are you ready for our next oh, story? Can I alert you some drama? She's not ready. Always. Okay. So we, it's so funny because we were just talking about this a few days ago about how TikTok and like the, the nature of TikTok celebrities is so interesting because you really... Every now and then somebody blows up. And what you do, we were saying last week, with those five minutes, we'll set the tone for, and we said Alex Earl did it very well. And Emily Mariko really felt like she didn't really capitalize on that. She kind of just wanted to live a quiet life and be like a major content creator, which is great. She did her first like businessy thing this week. Farmer's bag totes. Farmer's bag totes, Jackie. Farmer's oh my market. God, the people are rioting. Why? So it's, it's an extra large canvas tote. Okay. It's $120. Ooh. And it comes in two colorways. It doesn't really have any like, you know, special features, you know, storage, cup holder, whatever. A lot of people are comparing it to the LL Bean bag that everybody uses for their farmer's market, which I think costs $19.99. So people are rioting against Emily Rod Rodrigo, Emily Rodrigo, what's her name? Emily Mariko, um, saying, you know, not only is this out of touch, she doesn't care about her fans because she's not like the type of creator. She doesn't like respond back to people. They're like, you ignore your fans and now you're making us pay $120. Like no one's making you do anything. Calm the fuck down. And this conversation that's being had now, people are like, well, why would people support Emily Mariko when she doesn't interact with her followers ever? Like she ignores her followers. That's what people are saying now. And this is like all because she released a bag and I just think it's like the craziest conversation being had like she really doesn't owe anyone like a response she's just putting out her content and again like she released a bag would I literally ever spend $120 on a bag that looks like that no but if you're a really big Emily Mariko fan like that's what it's worth to you I guess and no one's forcing you to buy it just don't buy it just don't buy it it's nice looking and by the way both colors are sold out well, yeah, but then people are like, well, it was sold out. So obviously, you know, we don't care. But people are like, well, she could have just said it was sold out. Like everyone's being really trolly to Emily Mariko. It's because they can't get to her and they're mad. It's by the way, they can't get to her. And I, I pray to God she doesn't respond. Like just keep being your unbothered queen. Yeah. And it's like, if you're not going to respond to like everything up until this point, all the positive, whatever, don't respond now to the negative because then it will just breed more negativity because they're like, oh, that's how we get your attention. Yeah. Just keep doing you, Emily Mariko. Yeah, also, like, Emily Mariko is not L.L. Bean, you know? She doesn't have access to the type of... It's made in the USA, and, like, yes, $120 is a lot, but I imagine she, they're, they're not costing, you know, five cents to make. Like, in this economy, like, that's what things cost. Now, 120 yes, she's probably making a nice little profit, but it's not, like, the way it used to be, where, like, a canvas bag costs 10 cents. Like, she's trying... I know she's making it in the USA. She's making it, you know, ethically sourced queen. So, that plus the Rushed economy... canvas... Plus, you gotta think about the economy. That's what, you know, the economy. Stone Maybe. wash, 10 ounce brush canvas, 12 ounce duck canvas base and handles, 100% cotton, made in California. By the way, that's also, like with our merch prices have went up in like the last couple of years. And it's not because we're like greedy, we wanna make more money. That's literally like, everything's gone up. Things cost more now. Things cost more now. So like, that sucks. Inflation. Mm-hmm. I do miss the days when we could sell a sweatshirt for like $50. Two plus two equals sock around here. So two plus two equals crew neck. And the cost of a sock, it's staggering what it costs to make a boot these days. Uh, it is. And you know what? War is hard. War is hard. Life is war. The Lebanon is a machama. The life is a war. Ain't that the truth? Now I'm ready. What number story? Three. You, and you better, oh, yeah. you better get ready. Oh my God. Okay. I actually think if you have something to say, maybe you should say it now. And you should say it well, because there are $100 million podcast deals up on the table. Oh, go. Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes' Smartless podcast is going to Sirius XM for $100 million. Now, let me tell you why this is so interesting. And I chose this story. One, I love to, you know, monitor the podcasting landscape. I really, really do, especially as it pertains to Smartless. But two is that, you know, these once in a lifetime podcast deals, we hear about them all the time, obviously, Joe Rogan, $100 million Spotify, $60 million Caller Daddy. They're once in a lifetime, you know? You get them and like you're set. This is Smartless's second big deal. They sold to Amazon three years ago for 80 million. Between 60 yeah, was, and 80. 
It was a three-year deal. The three years are up. So now they got another deal for 100. Like, when we were speaking of jealousy, jealous. Yeah, this is wild. It's also good to know the deals are still happening because I think there's a lot of discourse around, will Spotify keep paying? Well, Spotify these- is done with those deals. Yeah. So what's they have gonna released, happen? They've released Armchair Expert. They've released Emma Chamberlain. And it's not a... Um, performance it's not because those podcasts are failures it's because those deals accomplished what they needed to accomplish they spent like a billion dollars over the course of a few years to get people listening to podcasts on spotify they accomplished that like people are listening now they don't need these all these spotify exclusive podcasts like they accomplished their goals oh i don't uh, do you know that for a fact that that's no that's what i think i just feel like companies don't operate like that where they're like this is enough for us i feel like they're not done until they have a hundred percent market share so i feel like the investment versus the return on investment the numbers didn't math oh so you feel like it was a performance thing yeah not that the shows didn't do well enough i'm sure they did really well but just that not well enough to justify these numbers Interesting. Also, Spotify oh. had major layoffs last year. Like, I don't think it's because they're doing so, oh, we hit our goals. Oh, that's actually a fire point. I don't and know. And I feel like they had big layoffs in the podcast department. I do feel like it's easy to look at certain shows and see if there was a payoff. Like, I feel like Joe Rogan, that was their biggest investment, a hundred, rumored to be a hundred million dollars. I think that probably is paying off in spades yeah and you can it's pretty visible on the charts like he's I, sure he's if he's the biggest show in the world he's going to be the biggest show on spotify when he's only on spotify but it's like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten no but also like you're still hearing about the show in the zeitgeist i do feel like when armchair expert went exclusively spotify i stopped hearing about the show yeah which isn't good yeah but i think that podcast is just so big i i don't know i i don't I don't know enough about it or its listeners. Now, let me say, back to Smartless, am I jealous of the 100 million? You guys have no idea. However, am I jealous that we started a podcast with two people and not three? So that if one day we get a major payday, we have to split it three ways? Because let's say, now they're all getting 33 million. They all live in California, very high tax. They're getting 15. That's insane. And that's over three years. This is a three year deal. So 5 million a year. Okay, I'm They're really kind not of like jealous. making no money. <laughs> I'm not jealous. <laughs> Take it back. No, I'm cracking up. Yeah, okay, poor. <laughs> it's giving... Smart, let's just pour a party. It's giving poverty line. <laughs> That's how you can make yourself feel better. But it says to me, Turdy, we're in the right industry. Keep working hard. Yes, of course, of course. But now I just, okay, now I'm like comparing. There's so money we, in podcasting. By the way, and that's like, look, Joe Rogan got the same deal, 100 million. He keeps it all for himself. Like, that's insane. No, and I think there's elements to Joe Rogan's deal that people don't know because we don't know how long his deal is for. He does still have ads on his show. He's making, it's way more than 100 million. I agree, I agree. But it's just interesting. Also, Joe Rogan doesn't seem like the sort of girly who's like, oh, here, Variety, here are all the deal points of my deal. I think, no, you know, they just worked with the information they could get, but they don't have all the information. That's a, actually a really good point. I always find it really interesting when people do big deals, when you don't find out how much the money is. I think that's, A, so much smarter. Like, who's trying to get robbed? And B, it's nobody's business. And C, it's usually because it's a lot more than people are speculating. Like, it's because it's kind of gauche to share. Yeah, it's uh, I agree. The deals, share. the deals where you don't know, or it's like rumored, even that old Amazon smartless deal between sixty and eighty. Like when there's a vagueness to it, fascinating. Yeah, and when when it's when the number is outright a hundred million, like the Sirius XM deal, that's because everybody approved it. Like we yeah, we want everyone to know it's a hundred. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to, you can. It's your choice to keep that number private or not. So right. if it's public, it's because the, the talent, the smartless guys wanted you to know. Yeah, it's I like guess they're, things they're, it's, could It's leak. almost like they were talking to us directly. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, you said smartless is over party? We'll show you smartless mil. is not over party. Yeah, 100 mil. You say 100 mil, I hear five. Totally. And they, you assume that they split it third, third, third? Yes. It's I was not gonna, like I was going to ask you. Okay. I was going to ask you that question too, but it's equal work. Like every, they each pick guests, they each interview. Jason is definitely more like the captain of the ship, but that's no. That's I, just I like feel a personality like, thing. Yep. 
I, I think it would be insane if they weren't. It would be partners. insane. And maybe like trouble at Smartless. Yeah. And I think like their proof is in the pudding. They've been this trio for many, many years and they're still having that success. And you really could not have stable success like that if there was an imbalance in the dynamics. Totally. I'm so happy for them. So the deal keeps the podcast widely available, but brings perks to Sirius XM subscribers and could possibly encourage more to join Sirius XM. Like, you know, you get yeah, yeah. special shit over there. Sirius is now like entering the podcasting game a little late, but um, as like the biggest radio company on the planet, they should have been doing this a lot sooner, but now they have like a full ass podcast, like team department, et cetera. Yeah, they also have other podcasts such as, just Jack and Will, Bad Dates and Owned. I think they're part of the Smartless world. Oh, Smartless has other podcasts or Sirius XM does? Oh, Sirius XM has a million podcasts. Yeah, they Tinks. have one. It's, it's me, Tinks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what this is. Just Jack and Will. Who's Jack? Me? Jack. Just Jack and Claude? Just Jack and Will with Sean Hayes and Eric McCormick. Oh, I guess that's oh. their characters. Spinoff. Spinoff, yeah. So the Smartless World, it's SNN. It's giving good guys probably a it's podcast. It's SNN. Redheads. Yeah. Smartless News Network. SNN. Anyways, congrats, grads. It's always congrats. nice to see people doing big things in the world of podcasting. And that's just titillating news. It is titillating news. And we need to work smarter, Turdy. We need to work smartless, sir. Yeah. So... Feeling motivated. Hashtag motivated. Love. Hashtag hustle. Hashtag the grind never sleeps. Ever. Hashtag smartless is not over party. We spoke the grind may, The grind may never sleep, but I do. Yeah, maybe we'd be more successful if we could get up earlier. Actually, maybe we would if we like got this podcast out at 8 a.m. Should we? Should we try it one day and see if our numbers are like. I like that idea. Or try it. We'd have to try for like at least a week, I think. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So oh, what time? Waking up early. Like, what time do we record then? Six a.m. That's ungodly. Maybe I agree. Actually, six is better for me. Well, let's discuss offline. We're working smarter, not harder. Like, Actually, we're, we're also still, harder. <laughs> we're also like we're still people. We could, by the way, by the way, by the way, night before. Yeah. If I had a studio in my house like you did, it would be much easier, but I could come here at night. Okay, let me see what time all these stories went live. So Tarek El Musa was 7 a.m. today. We would have missed it. That's the thing. Like news comes out at like five in the morning. Like Kristen, show GMA. Kristen Ushek we would have had. Smartless came out yesterday or Monday. Ooh, late. Old news. <laughs> uh, this next story came out this morning. And then okay, but think about nights like Sunday night. We were up what till eleven watching football. What we record at midnight? Maybe not on Sundays, <laughs> right? <laughs> we'll talk about it offline. Yeah. Okay. Let's get into the rest of the stories that are brought to you by Taylor Farms. Claudia, I, I am brought to you by Taylor Farms. Taylor Farms chopped salad kits deliver the freshest, best tasting salads to eat at home or on the go across North America. Taylor Farms is a family owned company on a mission to create healthy living through fresh, delicious food. Mission so accomplished, Taylor Farms. Their chopped salad kits a fi boring in every bag with over 30 flavors. So I feel like salads in a bag, they get a bad rap. They do. That's because other companies, be, they, they're putting crap in this bag. Like it's not fresh, it's not premium. These salad bags, first of all, I have like 15 in my fridge right now. I'm like in my salad era and I'm very specific about salads, especially like the level of chopped. The level of chopped. Taylor Farms salads in the bag are first of all so good. I love their flavors. Of course, I love the Caesar. I also love the citrus. Um, they're chopped. Like I want my salad to be mulch. Like I want it so tiny. It's so chopped. They have such good flavors. I had two yesterday, one for lunch and one with my dinner. I sent you a picture of my lunch salad. It was the most gorgeous thing. Like I look like a Kardashian eating salad. If you want like perfect salads at home all the time, like this has changed my life. They are pre-washed, pre-cut, and they're ready to enjoy. So sometimes when I'm like so hungry, feeling like an animal, I will eat it out of the bag. But if I'm trying to be like a nice girl, I'll put I it played, in I played, oh my gosh, I played in mine. I did the dressing drizzle. Turdy, I was living large. 
Purchase Taylor Farms chopped salad kits wherever you like to shop. It's available at all major grocery stores. Just a good thing. I'm on my health journey. Always good to have in the fridge. It, it could be the whole meal. You can add protein to it or you can just put it on the side for like, you know, you have a meal, a nice little side salad. That's what I did last night. I made meatballs and I had my Taylor Farms salad. Tailored Farms. I had my Travis Farm salad. Tailored Farms. Okay, speaking of tailored, you guys, things are, there's drama. Is there? Like sort of. Universal Music looks set oh, yeah. to take all of its songs off of TikTok after a breakdown in talks over the social media site's licensing agreement. In an open letter, the group accused TikTok of bullying, adding that they only wanted to pay a fraction of the rate offered by other platforms for the catalog of millions of songs. However, the Chinese-owned social media platform called this a false narrative. So while Universal claims a social media platform with more than 1 billion users accounts for just 1% of their revenue, the move will result in many of TikTok's users' favorite artists and sounds being removed. So seven out of the 10 top 10 artists of the year are with Universal and their musics would be coming off of TikTok, including Tailored Swift, Beyonce, Drake, The Weeknd, Bad SZA, Bunny, SZA, Ariana Grande, Carol G, everyone. Lana Del Rey. Now, you, TikTok, as of this morning, I believe all of you Universal Music Group's music is off TikTok. Like, it's it's fully started. TikTok released, like, a shady little statement being like, we've managed to come to deals with every other record label. I don't know why UMG is being difficult. UMG is the biggest. Um, if I had to take a side, I'd probably side with the artist. I do understand TikTok saying, like, the value of the... TikTok is a promotional tool. So the value of that is worth something in addition to, like, us paying you, like, a streaming licensing fee. But at the end of the day, like, you're using, this is a billion dollar company, TikTok, using copyrighted music. And like, you have to pay. That's the law. And also, if TikTok didn't have access to all of this music, the app would be crap. It's true, actually. They need the music, too. And what makes TikTok so awesome is that you can use any sound. And, and like, it started yeah. with, like, dancing and lip syncing. So true. Without music, what is TikTok? I know. And without TikTok, like, what, how are people going to promote music? Like, for real. Reels. Reels. Come yeah. on over. Shorts. Like, this is, I feel, an avoidable thing. They really need to figure this out. Like, this is bad for everyone. It's bad for TikTok and it's bad for the artists at UMG. Yeah, but the artists, I think UMG and the artists will be okay. And I think TikTok will be okay. And maybe TikTok changes now and they, maybe we do get more unknowns. Maybe it winds up being good for smaller artists who aren't with a label. This... This story, if I was an independent artist, like I'm jumping for joy. Like it obviously creates more opportunity for somebody who's not locked into a deal like this. But like the way the app exists now, it's like they both need each other. Universal Music Group, they need TikTok. The artists, need, even the big ones. Like you need TikTok. It's a, it's a part of like the ecosystem now. And TikTok needs that music. Who needs who more? I think UMG needs TikTok more. I think TikTok needs UMG more. Oh, okay. Because there are like other promotional... Wait, they could go back to the old ways of, you know, of doing it. There are other social media platforms who are willing to play ball. Yeah. And if it's all the music. I do want to say, though, and I would be very curious if there was, like, some data released. TikTok in the last, like, month or two has really kind of changed their MO. They're, they're becoming, like, a, a shopping platform. And all of the content, there's a new tab. They're really boosting videos that are selling products because you know you can have a shop on TikTok, you can sell other people's. It's like almost like an affiliate, you make commission, and it's really fucking annoying. Like it's insanely annoying. All the content I get served now, I had to block the, the hashtag hashtag TikTok shop because every video was trying to sell me ramen noodles. Like insane, annoying, and people are really annoyed about it because that's not what people come to TikTok for. And it's it's like a big change that hasn't ended up being good. It's like annoying, and between that and now losing like a huge music provider like the app I feel like is really changing in a bad way I think that's good I think it's good too like TikTok had too much of a you know chokehold on the culture for a while and there and it's to our detriment to, to the detriment of society of course like people are glued to their phones and stuff but just the things that have come out about like the things Mental that health. TikTok platforms no and the anti-semitism mm -hmm. and horrible the osama bin laden like okay yeah maybe yeah. we should take a step back from tiktok if that's where it's led us it's very so very, i think the true. app self-destructing love that for them i kind of agree like i love the app more than anything but i agree come on to reels turtle loop if you love something set a free
Yeah. Are you ready for our fifth and final story that's going to lead into our TV recap, which is really just yes. a TV recap? Yeah. Lala Kent thought Rachel Levis, a.k.a. Raquel, was going to go bag groceries and wouldn't have reached out if she had a crystal ball. So we saw last night on Real Housewives of Vanderpump Rules. Um, that's pretty much what the show's turned into. Yeah. Lala reaches out to Raquel because she feels bad after what she saw on the season. But then Lala went and watched what happens, happens live last night looking unbelievable. Yeah. I couldn't get enough of her face and her hair. I agree. Her face looked amazing. And her hair. The style. She basically, she basically said, like, she reached out to Raquel because she felt bad. But then Raquel ended up going on Bethany's podcast and, like, saying all these things and then launching her own podcast where Raquel, I mean, Lala thought, like, this was going to be the end of Raquel's public life. And so she wanted to, like, wish her well and just, like, make sure she was okay. But it turned out, like, that that wasn't the case. So she kind of regretted that whole thing anyway. Yeah. And I think we all thought that after she went to the mental health facility that she would go back to her hometown and be Rachel and lead a yeah. life outside of the public eye because clearly the limelight and the this wasn't good for lifestyle her. was not good for her and it led her, led her to make really poor choices. So, yeah. I have a lot of thoughts on the Vanderpump Rules episode. I do feel like beginning filming before Sandoval returns from his reality TV show competition filming was an enormous mistake because like say what you want about him the show is beyond uninteresting without him I didn't need an episode without him to be honest like there really wasn't much to even recap but I do wonder because this thought did cross my mind and I'm curious what your thoughts are did you feel like Lala reaching out to Raquel like Raquel was you know she said Raquel was on her heart and she just wanted to reach out and check in um do you feel like that was genuine or that was you know Lala kind of seeing after the Vanderpump Rules reunion a lot of like the conversation and the public opinions kind of turned being like damn like have we taken this too far sounds like Raquel maybe like could do something dangerous like do you feel like that was Lala trying to mitigate any sort of criticism or she genuinely felt that way? Because I really was not seeing the comparison between Lala's situation and, and Raquel's situation. I understood the comparison, but even if it was Lala being swayed by the public opinion, like maybe it took the public being like, whoa, for her to be like, whoa. And it's yeah. not, she doesn't seem like the type of person who does things so that she could be America's sweetheart and the fan favorite because she doesn't do those things. She doesn't do anything or say anything that she doesn't believe. So mm -hmm. even if that's what influenced her coming to this decision, I don't think it was in any like inauthentic way. And maybe it was just in a positive way. And sometimes it takes seeing something from the outside. Yeah. But I do think that in that moment where she was like, I only have time and if I turn against Tom, I have no one. I think that there was something that she related to in Raquel that she hadn't experienced up until that point. And when she described it, I could understand when she's like, I know that feeling. Okay. Um, let me ask you another question. Who's your least favorite person on this show? Well, it's Tom Sandoval. Well, honestly, he's not even my least favorite. Like, he's at least entertaining. Like, No, I can't listen to him speak. It's it's upsetting to me. Even oh, before I Scandaval, can. like, when he's, like, doing the most and the most extra. Oh, by the way, before Scandaval, like, I could not. Now it's, like, fun to watch someone self-destruct and be so delusional and narcissistic. For me, it's Tom Schwartz. I can't stand this man. I don't think he's funny. I don't think he's cute. I don't think anything he does is kitschy. Him being like, hey, Ariana, welcome to Tom Tom. Like, I hate this man and I just like I want him off the show like that's how much I hate him yeah yeah and it's hey. like he never took accountability for himself and just never like came out of Sandoval's shadow and now he's like no I'm not Sandoval don't put me in the shadow it's like you're the one who stayed there you're the one who tied yourself to him and made every decision and let your marriage go to shit because of him and now you don't want to be associated with him no, and I think a lot of people are like, damn, Katie's so mean to Schwartz. But like, I understand her on a deep level. Like, imagine being married to that and then finally being free and getting to like say everything you've ever felt. Yeah, and now he sees what you've been trying to say for years and it's like, go away, loser. Completely agree. And it's only because things turned out so bad for you. It's not like you came to this realization on your own. On your own. And it's like, even when Tom was doing the things that have gotten him, Tom Sandoval, when he was doing the things that have gotten him canceled, for lack of a better word, Tom Schwartz knew about them yep. and he aided and abetted. It's not like the wool was pulled over his eyes and the friend that he thought he was wasn't who he was. He knew. I also do find the dynamics of the female relationship so interesting. Yeah, because it's like they're all close yet they all have underlying tension. No, and like for those four, I feel like for so long, Ariana and Sheena were 
best friends. And also, Lala and Ariana were so close. They literally like had an affair. So when they sat at the table and Lala was like, I feel like, you know, so weird. I feel like you don't like me. And then when they were basically saying like, it's it's Katie and Ariana and then Sheena and Lala, like I was shocked. But no, and then it's also Sheena and Katie and Ariana oh, yeah. and, no, I'm sorry. It's also Lala and Katie have a best yeah. friendship and Sheena and Ariana. Those are the closer ties. And then secondary. No, I feel like they were saying primary was Katie and Ariana. No, they're Sheena not and Lala, primary. Like, live together and like are such close mom friends. I feel like the tightest in that group right now is actually Sheena and Lala. Right now, yes, but they've also had issues, remember, with the... Yeah, Lala's very close with Sheena and Katie. And Brock. She and Sheena's very close with Ariana. Therefore, they're all close. But there are these it's a complicated. Two, two strains of Katie and Sheena who kind of beef. Kate. And Lala and Ariana who kind of beef. Which I didn't know. Yeah, but it's all there. Like last season even. It, they've had... They, they There are like high highs and low lows with them. Yeah. It was like kind of a boring episode. Like I don't even know what to recap. Like Yeah, it was just sort of like setting the table for the season. It was nice to see everyone. But I really feel like the way Scandaval, like we were so caught up in it. Like I have completely come down from it. And it's kind it's of so true. weird to watch some of the stuff. And what I found most fascinating is Ariana said that Tom wanted to buy her out of the house, but she doesn't feel like she should have to move. What? I didn't know that either. Oh, and I wanted to say, like, I have sympathy for, like, their living situation being not ideal, but their bedrooms were unacceptable. I'm sorry. What gr grown people can't live like that. Their bedrooms were unacceptable. The texting through the assistant. But Tom saying that he wants to buy her out kind I of changes problem, everything. I thought the problem was that he was refusing to buy her out and refusing to sell the house, leaving her no option. Her only option would be to sell half of the house, a new roommate for Tom. Right, which is like, who's going to Not a real house? thing. Yeah. If he wants to buy out of the house, why wouldn't she leave? Why would she want to stay there? I mean, I guess it's like it is a good investment. That's the thing. They bought it like a while ago and the valley's so popping. And they're actually really responsible for like a lot of like, like the valley village becoming like cool, young area. It's honestly, actually, I kind of feel her. Like, why should I be rid of this decent investment that I worked hard for many years ago? I actually kind of feel that. So he should buy her out at the price that it's worth now. Oh, I guess, yeah. And to but have maybe, your maybe life want back it. and yeah, the yeah, peace yeah. and instead to be living with the person you hate most on the planet. Yeah, and I guess like you wouldn't Priceless. even really want to stay there because it's filled with such bad memories. Filled with bad memories. You were staying there where you were in a couple and you were settling down and, and now that's not even your life anymore. Like, yeah, why would you want to be there? I don't know. I You couldn't, like as long as he would pay minimum what she put what into worth. it minimum no the, no and what it's worth now yes we could argue over that they could probably reach an agreement on a price there's you couldn't put a price on the freedom yeah get and me out of here i am looking forward to him coming back like i'm sorry he is the most interesting point person in the show right now and i did think this was going to lead to raquel coming back that lala sending the text that was my my only suspicion was like lala was sending this text because she's like oh this show's boring we need raquel back they need something yeah, but Raquel's not coming back. She didn't answer the message. Yeah, and I, I don't think that she should, honestly. I'm not well, if she's so going to live a life in the public and do a podcast, she should be on the accompanying reality show. That's fair. But I'm not even, I'm not really desperate to hear or see from her. Like, to me, Tom is more interesting. He's so delusional. He's insane. He's got, it's almost like, I. we've always said he's like this horrible narcissist, but what has happened to him in like the last year is jaw-dropping, honestly. And to me, he's, the most interesting person in the world right now. Like everything he says is insanely stupid, insanely wrong. He's the biggest narcissist on the planet. Like it's fascinating to watch. Yeah, let's see what how he's gonna play it. Right. Oh my God, long episode today. Yeah, it's late. Oh my God, we gotta get this episode up. If only we woke up at 6 a.m. <laughs> You guys, thank you so much for listening to the Toast and Millennium Morning Show where we deliver the past five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeart Radio, Castbox, all the places wherever you listen to podcasts. Find us, the Toast, leave a five star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an amazing day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. Bye.